Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Kelty Red Wing 44. It is the little brother to the Kelty Red Wing 50. Uh, it is considered a day pack, depending on those you speak to. Others will call it an overnight pack or a three day or weekend pack. I'm just gonna leave that up to you to determine if it's going to fit into your particular use case. For me, I actually had a slightly different use case in mind for this. As you might notice, I'm not doing a review in the woods as you might see other people doing for uh, the Red Wing 50. There aren't many reviews that I found of the actual Red Wing 44 here. But primarily the reason I'm not doing this in the woods is because I use the Red Wing 44 here, not just as a you know day pack for me when I go hiking in the woods, but I also kind of use it when I'm transporting my electronics and video equipment around in a more urban environment. So for me, it's a utilitarian pack for both in the woods and urban areas. So that's my use case for it. Your use case might differ slightly. So let's start with the overall specifications. It has a overall length of 22 inches. The small version of the Red Wing 50 is 24 inches. Now that extra two inches was a big deal for me. Now I'm 5'7", which I will show you the pack on me a little later. And I did try the Red Wing 50 in a store and it was not quite as comfortable as I wanted it to be. The, those extra two inches made it sit a little low on uh, my back and I was just not really happy with how it felt. So I decided to go with the 44, which has that two inches shorter in length. Uh, it has a width of 15 inches, a depth of 12 inches, and a volume of 27 inches cubed or 44 liters, hence the Red Wing 44. If you're looking for a comparison, the Red Wing 50 is 3,000 inches cubed or 49 liters. So the, 40, uh, the Red Wing 44 here is supposed to fit a torso range of 14.5 to 18.5 inches, depending. So if you're a smaller guy like myself, I'm kind of scrawny. If you've seen any of my other videos, I always say I'm kind of built like a woman. Uh, or if you're a female who's looking for a slightly more manageable pack, uh, the hip belt, which I will show you when I flip the pack around, fits anywhere from 28 to 46 inches. Now, that's it for the general specs. All the other, you know, what it's made of, what have you. I'm going to throw that in the description because I don't want to bog down the video with just me talking about what the pack is made of. I'd rather show you more about the pack. So here you can see I got it in this blue-gray combination. It does come in several other colors. Again, I will link that in the description. Uh, starting at the top, you have a little quick storage pouch or area up here. Uh, perfect for putting, in my case, I put my cameras and a few extra batteries up here, obviously in plastic bags in case it rains if I am out in the woods. You have a carrying handle, which is nice. The carrying handle at the top, I was a little disappointed it was so small, but after a while I realized I didn't really use it. I was mostly using this anyway. So having a nice big grip there was a plus. Uh, you also have plenty of daisy chaining there. And at the very bottom, an ice axe loop, which you can see I have just a paracord bracelet hanging off of because again, I have small wrists, so it was far too big for me. If we go into the smaller of the two pockets, you can see that it has a place to hang your key fob off of, as well as several pockets. Here you have a larger back pocket and then well, where I have some maps, a cheap knife, and uh, plenty of smaller pockets for things like pens and pencils. You also have what I would consider a tech-ish pocket because this is a felt-lined pocket, which you can Velcro shut so you can throw your cell phone in there. And obviously you have the front of the pocket that you could stick more stuff into. So we'll close that one up. Now, it is a... It is a panel loading pack for the main area, which I will back off now. And it is held in place by these compression straps. You have two on each side at the 
one at the top and one at the bottom. My main complaint about the compression straps, not the straps themselves, they do an excellent job of changing the shape and size of the pack as needed, but the, the actual clip itself, I felt was kind of small. And when I say small, I have small hands. So when I would try and open it, didn't quite work out as smoothly as I wanted to, but really that's the only complaint I have about the compression straps. They do work very well. And you have a large U-shape opening for the main compartment of the pack, which we're gonna just drop that open really wide so you can see. Hopefully you can see. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look too dark, you, you can see. So you've got your U-shaped opening for the pack, U-shaped opening for the pack's main compartment where you could stack your sleeping bag, your clothes, whatever you need. Uh, here you will notice that you have clips that are adjustable on the slide rail here uh, for a hydration bladder, which would slip back in here. You can funnel the tube for the hydration bladder up through the top so that it comes out and little opening right there. This is also how you access frame sheet. If you just open the Velcro here, you can pop out the frame sheet, which is visible now. Push that back in. This is also how you would access the aluminum stay, which I'll show you up front. But if we tilt this over, there is a little Velcro tab here, which you pull up and will give you access to where the aluminum stay is. Since I have this hanging on a chair at the moment, it would be a little difficult to access. But if you wanted to remove the aluminum stay, that's how you would do it. Likewise, if you wanted to get rid of the frame sheet, this is where you would go do it. Now, part of the uh, benefit of the U-shape loading is if you wanted to, you could use this pack as a top loading by just opening the top compression straps and opening it slightly and loading things in this way. Or if you have a full pack and just want to get to stuff at the bottom, you adjust your zippers accordingly and you could get two items at the bottom. Now the zippers do not go all the way to the bottom of the pack, so you will always have a area which will remain full, which is nice, so you don't have to worry about stuff dropping out on you. So really that is the front of the pack or the actual bag itself. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take, show you the side of the bag and then flip you around to the front. On the side of the pack, you can see obviously my compression straps, my compression straps still flopping around, but you have these side pouches, which in this case, I have a small first aid kit. Um, it is big enough to fit a water bottle in if you want to put a water bottle in these side ones. Uh, it also has pass-throughs behind which lead down here into your actual pouch for a water bottle if you wanted to. Um, they're good for, in my case, I've used them for an umbrella and some trekking poles, or if I'm actually using it, like I said, in the urban environment <laughs> in my situations, umbrella and my tripod or whatever works very well. Sticks, you know, stick it to the back of there. You're good to go. The, the pouches for the water, is very stretchy and I was I was kind of concerned because it felt a little cheap but it's not really I left a water bottle in here well not a water bottle more like a, a large size 32 ounce Gatorade uh, in for two weeks just to see what the elastic would do because I've had other packs where the elastic wears out very quickly and it loses its elasticity uh, not so the case with the Kelty here two weeks didn't move it um, was perfectly fine You'll notice there's more dangly for you to hang stuff off of, which is really nice. There, there is no end to the amount of places that you can hang stuff off of this. All right, so looking at the front or back of the pack, depending on your orientation, but the part of the pack that will sit against your back, uh, you'll notice you have an assortment of adjustments up at your shoulder, lower portion. There is also a sternum strap, which is on rails on the side so you can adjust to your preferred height, as well as there is the place to put your 
hydration bladder tube. Generally, I use that to hang my keys off of only because one, I can make noise since I live around bear country um, and I don't feel like having bears sneak up on me. Uh, so hang them there and they're easier, quick access. Uh, the shoulder straps are rather wide uh, if you have a smaller frame. Uh, again, I will show you in a moment what that looks like on a person. I had uh, concerns, obviously, because like I said, I have a smaller build. And not to be one of those people, but uh, you know, way back when in high school, I dislocated my shoulder and it never quite healed correctly. So I constantly worry about backpacks and how the pressure is on my shoulder. Uh, didn't have any issues with this only because there are so many places to adjust the weight and load of the pack itself as well as the waist belt which we'll be getting to shortly that I did not have any issues with my shoulder. It was perfectly comfortable, didn't have to work. All right, so we're just going to try and flop these out of the way for a moment uh, so that you can see the dynamic airflow back as well as the light beam single aluminum stay which runs from the top of the pack to the bottom of the pack. Uh, the airflow back is nice, but not foolproof. Obviously, if you are out on an extremely hot day, it, you will sweat. Um, I'll have to see. I, I took pictures after a particularly long hike out in the woods where this was just like all sorts of different colors because my sweat had seeped through to the back. It, it was cooler than other packs that I've used, but you're still gonna get hot. It is padded and the pads do raise the, the actual back of the pack a little bit above the aluminum stay. However, when I first started using the pack, I could feel on you know, my spine the aluminum stay. But if, if you, you know, bend it a little bit, it's only aluminum, you can get it to where you won't feel it. It is hollow in the center with uh, two ridges on the top, two ridges on the side, so that kind of helps make it less noticeable as well. Moving down to the hip belt, you'll notice there is a nice padded portion here, which will sit at your lower back, as well as if we look at the hip belt itself, it is fully adjustable. You can see your straps here, as well as the patented front strap, which I will be demonstrating a little later. But uh, on both sides of the waist belt, you have, again, more places that you can daisy chain stuff to. Uh, and you know, depending on where you live, you can do binoculars or have a hand sanitizer dangling off there. Uh, generally I had, or again, urban usage, uh, packs with uh, extra batteries for my camcorder and a uh, video camera. Now, one of the main things that I was reading about the Red Wing 50, and again, like I said, I haven't seen many videos of the Red Wing 44 here, was that the waist belt. People were unsure if it was removable or saying it was not removable. I assure you it is removable. There is a trick to it though. I mean, if you reach back behind the pad, you can feel the aluminum stay, which goes into the waist belt itself. So what you have to do is come around to the front, go into the large, U-shape opening and just like before, where the frame sheet is and where the aluminum stay is, pull up that tab and here, that's the aluminum stay. And that is as far as you need to pull it out in order to remove the, well, uh, to remove the waist belt. So just pull it up that way and trying to do this on camera is not as easy as I thought it was gonna be. And then you could just Notice the waist belt moving. You will have to unbuckle it or uncinch it from these side uh, restraints, but after that, it is totally removable. What you're looking at is right here, this is the pocket. Right here, this is the little pocket that the aluminum stay sits in. So once you pull the aluminum stay out of that, you can remove the waist belt. But just keep in mind also that if you, rem if you remove the waist belt and plan on keeping the aluminum stay in, you may run into a problem because there's no place for the aluminum stay to sit. So if you're gonna pull off the waist belt, you'll just be using the frame sheet. Now, just give me a moment and I'm gonna put this back together uh, again, cause there's a slight trick to getting it back together cause you have to line up the aluminum stay with the pouch. And I <laughs> really don't think you wanna see that on camera. So just give me a second. 
All right, so I did a lot of talking about how the look and feel of it is uh, when I take it out, either on the trail or walking through, you know, a convention or something like that. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you front and back view of what this looks like on me. I'm 5'7", male, and give you an idea what that looks like uh, on a slender framed person. I will also show you how the waist belt adjusts very easily, as well as one of my big concerns when I was, you know, working on these pouches for water bottles. I wanted to make sure that I would actually be able to easily pull out the water bottle. And when I first started taking it out into the woods, it gave me a little difficulty because uh, I didn't have everything proportioned correctly yet. And I had to take the pack off to get to the water and that kind of aggravated me. But once I got things situated, you can easily take, the water, uh, take out a bottle while the pack is still on your back, which is very important in my opinion. So let me show you what those things look like. Uh, just, you know, again, give you a visual representation rather than just numbers so you have an idea what this looks like on a person. All right, just to give you an idea of what the front sternum strap, waist belt, this is the pack front view. Again, five, seven, and there's the water, or in my case, the Gatorade bottle. Like I said, easy enough to get to. Also easy enough to put back. There's the back of the pack, again, on somebody who's five, seven. Uh, sorry if it doesn't look great, but filming-wise, it was a little difficult uh, to find a space in my condo that would allow me to film far enough away. Normally I film arm's length away from the camera, so it was a little difficult. Hopefully you get an idea of what the general look of that is. Uh, again, if you want a better look, just let me know. I'll go out, uh, take the camera with me when I go out in the woods and film there. Now, as for the waist belt, like I said, it is fairly easy to adjust. The waist belt actually, as compared to the other clips, might look a little weird, but is really easy to use and is fat enough in my opinion that even my little skinny fingers don't have problems with it. If you want to adjust it, you either grab the straps, pull thusly, they'll dangle a bit, or if you need to loosen it because for whatever reason, I mean, I've done it where I've eat a big meal and then going out in the woods and just need to loosen the waist strap a little bit. It's as simple as pulling it to the side and there you got extra give or pull it front and now the give is gone and you cinch it up tight against your stomach. Or if you want, you could just kind of have it hanging down there. Uh, I've done it where I've actually folded it behind the pack. Not the most comfortable thing if you have a heavy load, but uh, if you have a light load, it keeps everything out of the way. If not, you always can remove it uh, as I showed you before and get it out of the way that way. So again, clip. There you go. Obviously, it uh, does not have a lot of stuff in there. I didn't put a pillow in there to puff it up any. Uh, it just kind of has the remnants of what's left over after my uh, day hike a couple weeks ago. Hope that helps. Okay, so hopefully that helps you out a little bit to determine size ratio. Uh, I did forget to mention in all of my talking because there are just so many places to hang things off of. You do have daisy chain across the bottom of the pack. Uh, I don't know why I forgot to mention that because this is generally where uh, if I had extra power cables or extension cords, they go down here. So if you are looking for a cheap, well-constructed, all around, just everyday pack, um, again, weekend, day, three day adventure pack, depending on your use case, uh, Kelty Red Wing 44, I would recommend it. The only issue that I had with this, no matter where I tried to find this bag, it was always $114.99. That's on Amazon, that's on Kelty, that's on, no matter where you went. If you went to uh, Dick's, Sporting, Dick's Sporting Goods, 
the pack was always the same price no matter where you went. If you don't mind spending $114, it's an excellent versatile pack and I would recommend it for, again, my use cases, I use it for day hikes and just, you know, my around town to bring filming equipment or, you know, I, I fit a 17 inch laptop in here. It's not padded very well for a laptop, but you could do it if you wanted to. So again, Kelsey Red Wing 44, there aren't many videos out there. Hopefully this helped in some way, shape or form. If there's some other aspect of the bag that I missed that you want to see, please let me know in the comments section below. Uh, I've been Wander001. Thanks for watching.